The James Webb Telescope continues its scientific mission to convince the contrary, who still believe the Earth is flat, which has worked with fluctuating success so far. However, for those who love space, the telescope offers incredible images. Over the past weeks, Webb has captured many amazing shots, such as the birth of a star, a voracious black hole, and the next exoplanets, which we will analyze later. Today, let's talk about the new breathtaking photographs of Jupiter. Make yourself comfortable, friends. Now we will show and explore everything. Indeed, this is the largest planet in the solar system that we've not yet seen. The first thing we want to point out in these photos is the false colors. Jupiter is not actually blue or light green as seen in these photos. This is because they were taken with the NIRCAM instrument, which operates in the near-infrared range. If we imagine the entire electromagnetic spectrum as a straight line, then the light visible to the human eye will be a small line containing wavelengths that our eye can recognize. On the left side of the spectrum is light with shorter wavelengths. This is ultraviolet. It got its name because the violet color has the shortest wavelength amongst the visible colors and is on the borderline of what our eyes can discern. Crossing the visual barrier, you get ultraviolet, which is popular in medicine. It also leaves a tan on the body and helps protect documents from forgery. If you go to the other side of the spectrum, then we will see red at the very border of the colors with the longest wavelengths. And therefore, if we go beyond the visibility limit, we will fall into the infrared range. Easy to remember, right? Moreover, the universe in the infrared spectrum is phoning like crazy. Even we are also phoning. So does absolutely any heated body. The only thing is that our eyes are not sensitive enough to see it. So scientists have come up with rockets aimed at targets by their infrared signature, night vision devices, and other things. And astronomers use infrared detectors to see distant objects. Here too, everything is simple and straightforward. There is a near-infrared range, a mid-infrared, and a far-infrared. The near is adjacent to visible light and behaves in much the same way. And the farther out, the longer wavelength and more challenging it is to catch. The direct photo of Jupiter was taken in the near-infrared range. That is, it has something that our eye cannot almost, almost see. To help us, astronomers convert telescope data into colors familiar and understandable to humans, not randomly but in accordance with clear instructions. Just as visible light's green and red colors have different wavelengths, there are also colors in the near-infrared. They are transformed into those visible to a person exactly according to the same scheme. The blue areas in the photo are light with short waves. The redder the regions, the longer the wavelengths. Sorry for the long explanation, but many people in the comments claim that everything is photoshopped, and when they hear the phrase about false colors, they fall into ecstasy, declaring that we are being deceived. No one is deceiving us. The photos show the results of hard scientific work. Let's analyze it. The first thing that catches your eye is the bright caps on Jupiter's poles. These are the polar lights known to every inhabitant of the North on Earth. Like on our planet, they are even more common on Jupiter because the gas giant's magnetic field is incredibly powerful. And that is so amazing. What creates the Earth's magnetic field? That's right, a core of liquid metal that moves and works like a dynamo. Actually, because of this, our planet's magnetic field is similar to the field of an ordinary line magnet with poles above and below. As a result, they almost coincide with the geographic north and south poles. But on Jupiter, things are much more complicated. If only because there's no metal core there. After all, we're talking about a gas giant, right? In schools, we are told that there is nothing on planets like this apart from gas. However, in reality, things are a little more complicated. In 1997, gravitational measurements indicated that Jupiter must have a solid core. In 2008, the University of California calculated that it is 14 to 18 times the mass of the Earth and accounts for 5% of the gas giant's mass. In 2020, the Juno probe told exactly what this core looks like. Gravity helped us to do this. The probe simply circled the planet at various angles and measured the gravitational effect. If the core is solid and spherical, the forces must act uniformly. If it is small and dense, the device will periodically accelerate, and by measuring the speed, you can conclude the size. Using the method of such measurements of the gravitational influence, scientists concluded that Jupiter has a core. However, it's not exactly round. It's as if it's smeared around the planet's insides. 
most likely due to a collision with something massive in the past. Why is it so important? Because Jupiter's magnetic field looks like an impressionist painting, and for a long time, scientists could not figure out why. Even Saturn looks similar to the Earth and is quite symmetrical. And Jupiter, in this range, looks like a coronavirus photo, with absolutely chaotic lines. Why one of the magnetic poles of the gas giant is located right on the equator? No such thing exists in the solar system on any of the planets. But this does not change the presence of a magnetic field. Moreover, Jupiter's field is 20 times stronger than Earth's and has a magnetic moment 20,000 times greater. For a second, the magnetic field bubble around Jupiter is 20 million kilometers wide, which is 15 times larger than the Sun. Sometimes, Jupiter's enormous field even reaches Saturn, actually, hence the polar lights in the photographs. And since the field is strong, the auroras are larger and brighter. The dispersed particles of the solar wind, which are delayed by the magnetic field, interact with the atmosphere, and a beautiful glow is obtained. True, a little deadly. The same Juno apparatus flying past the giant recorded radiation similar to 100 million jaw x-rays. We think it's not worth mentioning that this is equal to a quick and painful death for a person. However, radiation is a huge problem for the hypothetical colonization of Jupiter's attractive moons. Europa has a lot of water, but radiation constantly burns out any biosignatures. Specifically, the level of exposure on this satellite is 2,000 times higher than in the most dangerous places on Earth. Because of this, scientists hope to find life on the Moon only deep below the surface. The situation is the same with other satellites, so these worlds are only suitable for robots. Actually, a couple of Jupiter's satellites also lit up in James Webb's photos. These are Amalthea and Adrastia. Amalthea is notable for being one of the largest all-icy bodies in the solar system. It is similar in shape to a potato and consists entirely of loose water ice. The surface temperature is about minus 146 degrees, and the ash from the volcanoes of another moon, Io, gives Amalthea a stylish reddish hue. The satellite is 250 kilometers long and has a land area plus or minus the size of Ireland. If such a giant were towed away, the water problem for any planet could be solved for centuries to come. But of course, this is impossible with the current level of technology. The second satellite visible in the photo, Adrastia, is not so interesting. The ball is only 20 kilometers in diameter and consists mainly of silicate rocks and solid materials. The most remarkable detail of Adrastia is its sad fate because of the influence of Jupiter's powerful gravity. It will sooner or later collide with the planet. What else is remarkable about James Webb's photograph? First, the Great Red Spot is a huge storm familiar to everyone. True, in the photo, the storm, for some reason, is not red, but white. And this is again a false color assigned to the region during the transformation of the near-infrared radiation. It's made for a reason. Firstly, the white color of the spot and other Jupiter areas in the photo means that a lot of sunlight is reflected in these places. Secondly, Heidi Hummel, one of the members of James Webb's team, said that the white color symbolizes clouds flying at high altitudes. The white spots and stripes in the photo show us where storms rage at high altitudes in the Jupiter atmosphere. In another filter, you can see many smaller areas beside the large ones. These huge storms rage on the gas giant for many years and sometimes even centuries. Why was the telescope photographing Jupiter at all? Here the answer is the same as in our previous video. Scientists are still testing the possibilities of James Webb, and it is most convenient to do this with objects we know well. This is the only way to compare how much detail a telescope can actually show. Professor M. K. DePater of the University of California led the study and said they didn't expect so many details. And it's not about photography. It's about the data that James Webb transmits along with them. From them, you can tell about the temperature of various parts of Jupiter, the age of storms, the structure of the auroras, and even about some of the gas giant gravitational features. Photos are just a side result of the work to show off to ordinary hard workers. There is another point in the image where M. K. DePater dwelled separately. He pointed to the stars and galaxies seen in this photo of Jupiter. This is very important because they're in the frame, showing the telescope's sensitivity. Typically, telescopes cannot capture objects that are too bright and too faint at the same time. So either the dim ones will not be visible or the bright ones will be overexposed. However, James Webb is so sensitive that it can show both. For Jupiter, this is not so important. We have already flown to the gas giant with probes, and it's easy to see it from Earth. 
But for photographs of distant space, this is extremely important. This is the most fascinating about these images. Now scientists are still playing with the telescope and probing its abilities. It will be used to its fullest later, knowing all the nuances of work and data processing. Well, we will be happy to analyze all future photos of James Webb in our new upcoming videos. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and leave your comments. See you soon, friends.